Welcome to Soft Talk. The picture in the background is of Pillowra Court. That is the seat of the royal palace of the Sakya kings. The palace of King Suddhodan in particular. King Suddhodan is the father of Siddharth Gautam, the fully enlightened Buddha. Siddharth Gautam is in fact one of the 28 Buddhas, he is the fully enlightened one apart from Siddharth Gautam. Various other Buddhas were born and uh, received their level of enlightenment in Nepal, in this very area, in fact, in the Lumbini area. So this is a historic place. It's quiet, it's full of those lush green woods, and I ask you to visit this place at least once. This path that you see this leads to the Santhagar, that is the parliament of the Sakya kings. Welcome to the program. The picture that you see in the background is of Tilora Court. Remember that place? That is where the royal palace of the Sakya kings is located. It's in ruins these days. There are efforts to conserve this historic place. This is where the Sakya prince, known the world over, as the beacon of peace, that is, Gautam Buddha was born as a young prince. And uh, legends suggest that this is the very place, in fact, where the prince Siddharth attained that state of mind. He attained that wisdom. He attained the liberation while meditating in these woods under the shades of a jamun tree. That is what the legion goes. But in course of time, what happened is he got in these worldly affairs and he forgot what he had attained, that level of uh, consciousness, that supreme level of consciousness, consciousness that ultimate consciousness. I, I don't have the words to describe its state of mind, but uh, the liberation that he was to let uh, attain uh, after a lot of struggle in Bodh Kaya, that is what it is said. Uh, in fact, he had attained it in these woods themselves. But maybe destiny had other plans for him and he just uh, uh, traveled quite a lot. He strived quite a lot to attain that state of mind once again. Uh, with this, I request you to visit this historic place. I request you to visit Lumbini, Tilaura Court, and these historic places in Kapil Bastu district of Nepal, where Buddha, Gautam Buddha, was born. He attained enlightenment also in those very places, in that, in these very woods. But in course of time, he forgot that. He got lost in these worldly pleasures or something like that. And then he had to strive a lot to attain that state of mind once again. 
so i request you to visit these places the lumbini area tilora court to revisit the journey of gautam buddha and different other buddhas that were born in nepal with this remark i start this episode of soft talk today's presentation is titled more than just a rubber stamp amid the marathon negotiations among the political parties over the election of nepal's third president it will be worthwhile to turn the pages of the constitution of nepal and check what kind of president it has envisaged article 612 of the charter states the president shall be the head of the state of nepal he or she shall perform his or her functions in accordance with this constitution and federal law clause 61 three states that the president shall promote national unity of nepal whereas clause 61 fourth stipulates that the main duty of the president shall be to abide by and protect the constitution despite these provisions of our presidents been able to defend protect and abide by the constitution have they been able to be the symbol of national unity by rising above partisan interests some soul searching on the part of our heads of state has indeed become necessary these questions are not meant to dislodge the office holders from their respective high pedestals rather they are meant to make sure that their successors learn from the past and manage to do justice to their rules the role of the president has indeed become significant because the executive organ of the nepali state often shows tyrannical tendencies like its kith and kin the world over and there's no guarantee that it won't show them in future the principles of separation of powers and checks and balances notwithstanding the executive the executive rights rough sword over civil liberties by violating the jurisdiction of two other state organs the legislature and the judiciary our decades long experience with parliamentary democracy shows that the executive has often imposed its will on the sovereign parliament with the respected uh, with the respective parties cracking their whips on lawmakers from their respective folds and the latter being the mother parties bedding while submitting to the whip like the hapless beasts of burden instead of casting their votes of conscience the people's representatives have more often than not done a great disservice to the country and the people the executive has often targeted the supreme court the final interpreter of the constitution for its refusal to do its bidding delivering injustice to the deliverer of justice there is no doubt of experts who point out that the provision of a parliamentary hearing before the appointment of judges is a bit to ensure the appointment of the political parties chosen candidates while not immune from such transgressions the permanent opposition the fourth state has time and time again stood against the executives 
tyrannical tendencies. As the protector, defender, and the adherent of the constitution, and as the symbol of national unity, the president has a great role to play and ensure the implementation of the charter in its letter and spirit. For all this, the president needs to be more than a rubber stamp. It's high time for the political parties to choose a candidate that manages to fill in those big shoes that this position demands. With this remark, I wrap up this edition of Soft Talk. I request you to subscribe to this channel, comment on our presentation, and press that like button. Your support towards this initiative aimed at promoting citizenship, uh, your support for this channel which aims to support, which aims to promote citizen journalism. It means quite a lot to us. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening.